G'day peoples. So if you've been flying for a while, inevitably something like this is going to happen. And probably this. And well probably this as well. also probably going to end up with is a pile that looks something like this. So we all know that buying new motors gets pretty expensive pretty quickly. What can we do about that? Well, in this video what I'm going to show you is one way that we can refurbish these motors. So I've got a quad over here that uh, has experienced an episode uh, similar to the clips you've just seen. So we're going to have a go at swapping out the bearings from one of these dead motors and seeing if we can fix uh, a motor that's still good. Let's get to it. So we're all set up here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the tape off this arm so we can get at the ESC. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to unsolder this ESC. Okay. Now let's see if we can hear that. Yeah, those bearings do not sound healthy. Now we're just going to take the motor off. So we can see the way that these motors are put together. There's a little C clip here, and then underneath that C clip, underneath here, there's a little washer, sort of a copper washer and then the bearings. Now what you need to do is you need to take that C-clip off. Once that C-clip is off, that washer can come off and then you can pull the bell from the base. What we're going to do is we're going to set up to take that um, C-clip off and I'll show you a little tool that I've made to make that process a hell of a lot easier. The biggest challenge for taking these motors apart is getting that uh, C-clip off or that circlip off. So here's the little tool that I've made. Um, it's just a pair of nail scissors that I got from the chemist and I've ground off just the end just a little bit and what I've done is I've cut some grooves in on either side and all I did was just got the Dremel and just cut in, cut in there, and then cut in on the other side, and just created those two little notches there. And the idea is that these two notches sort of key into the circlip, and then you open up the scissors, and it prizes that circlip open, right? But those notches mean that the circlip can't ping off and uh, get lost in the, you know, the never-never that is the back of your shed. So with these, you can take that circlip off without one, losing it, hopefully, and two, destroying the circlip because all you're doing is just opening it enough to get the circlip off the little, um, ridge that's the groove that's uh, on the shaft of the motor. Alright, so let me show you how these work and let's see if we can't get that circlip off. Okay, so we've got our motor set up in a vise here and uh, it's tight enough to keep it there but not tight enough to damage the threads on the motor shaft. So what we want to do is we want to sort of poke these and you kind of need to poke them past the washer so sometimes you can sort of poke it in and then turn them. Right, and then what we want to do is, once they're in, we can use both hands and we're going to open them, open this up and hopefully you can see the circlip opening up. And if we keep prizing, there it goes. Whoop, okay, it's almost off. There we go. And there's the circlip off. Alright, 
Now it's opened up a little bit, but we haven't wrecked it. So we should be able to get that guy back on again. Now, what you do not want to do is pick this up and lose that washer that's sitting there. Right? That little spacer washer. So what we want to do is we want to just grab the pot tweezers here and we'll just gently take that off. So you should have the circlet now and the washer and now this is uh, free. The bell and the base are now free to be separated. Okay, with it still in the vise like this. <clears throat> so the next step now is to get these ball bearings out of here. Okay, so what people tend to be tempted to do is to take something small and put it in near the balls and try to tap try to tap those ball bearings out like that. Now that's fine and it'll probably work, but what can happen is that you can damage this shield or you can damage the edge of the ball bearing. So what we really need to do is we need to put even pressure across this ball bearing to tap it out. Now that's fine if we were tapping it that way, but we need to tap it back out this way so I found a little trick to do that. What you do is you take a um, a washer, okay? It's it's not thick, but it's not a really thin one. It needs to have a little bit of heft to it. And what we want to do is we want to cut that washer. So we've got a half piece of washer now. Now what we actually want is just a small piece off the end. So we need to cut it one more time, being careful not to have it fly across the shed and being careful not to cut our fingers. So what we'll end up with is a small little piece of washer like that. We want the piece of washer to be a little bit wider than the bearing. What we're going to do is we're going to put that piece of metal into there and we want to just position it in there so that it lays flat. There we go. So what we want to do is we want to take something that will fit down into that hole and then we take our knockrometer and we just that bearing out. And so what we've done is we've been able to tap that bearing out without causing any damage to that shielding. Once that one's out, the other one is really relatively easy to get out of there. We can still use that same little piece of metal tap that out And we've got our two bearings out. Putting it back together is literally just the reverse of what we just did. Position the bearing. It may just need just a little bit of uh, persuasion to get it down in there. And then all we need to do is do the same for the back here. So that one's in, and that one's in, and now we can put our bell back on. Now what we want to do is we want to put that washer back on. It's really important that you do that because otherwise you're going to have a little bit too much space between the circlip and the bearing, and it's going to be able to move up and down, and also it could damage your bearing. Now with the circlip, what we want to do is we want to take our circlip tool and we want to get the circlip onto the little ridges that we made 
And then we can use our two hands to separate that circlip. And gently it down and we want to make sure that that circlet is in that groove. All right so we've got our washer and our circlet back onto the motor. We can just make sure that that is cinched up as much as we can. All we need to do now is put it back on the quad and uh, the next piece of footage you'll see is uh, hopefully a successful flight of the quad without any vibes. So I hope you peoples like the video. Um, let me know if you do, let me know if you don't. If you want me to make some more videos like this, if you've got any suggestions, I'm all ears. Have fun peoples, fly safe. Now, whatever you do, don't put the motor together without this washer. If you do, there's going to be far too much gap between the balls and the C-clip. That's going to result in far too much shaft play and in the end, ruined balls.